What about parking enforcement? I mean, it's obvious in Britain these days that uh, there are a lot of people pretty unhappy about this new parking regime. That's the only way to put it. These days, you can't park your car for five minutes to pop in and go and buy a newspaper because the private parking attendant or the or the traditional traffic warden or your local Bobby will be down on you like a ton of bricks. Well, I, I, I must say, I, I'm inclined to agree with you for half of it and not the other half. Mm. You see, I happen to live in London, mm. and people come along and they park outside my garage, mm. so I can't get my car in. And this is double yellow line where I am. And so I feel, and I have been pinched outside my own home on mm. a Saturday morning, if you will. Well, let's have your reaction to that. How did you react to that? Did you say, fair cop, I'll pay well, up? Virtually, I, I was really... <laughs> really teed off quite yeah. frankly but I did pay up yes because mm. because I would rather I would rather have it and have the uh, and get and make a mistake than not have it not be able to make a mistake you see there is this school of thought that in the past when there was this room for uh, maneuver when there was this margin of error when you knew you might get five or ten minutes leeway from your friendly traffic warden you did abuse the system you did clog the street for ten minutes the argument is, and I've got to say, I don't have a great deal of sympathy with it, although I can understand where they're coming from when they say it, that if we eliminate that margin of error, if you're one second this side of the penalty, uh, you're innocent, and you're one second the other side, you're guilty and you pay a fine, at least you know where you stand. In other words, the choice yeah, is yours. Yeah. Abuse the system by a matter of two or three seconds and you'll get the fine and you'll get the ticket. Stay the right side of the law and you'll get away scot-free. There are Yeah, but there are places, you know, where, you get, where you're allowed to stop for a, few, for a short while, but so few of us know what the lines mean. I mean, I meet quite a lot of people who do not realise that double yellow lines means never ever weekends bank holidays or ever mm. and and then you get two tags on the side three tags yep. very few people know or, or look up to see what they are yeah but by the same token you know a lot of people work on the basis that single yellow line it's okay to park on a single yellow say on a sunday and yeah. if you go to a tourist attraction like greenwich on a sunday and you work on that basis uh, and you park on a single yellow line, you'll get a parking ticket. You can park in central London or huge chunks of central London on a single ye yellow line yeah. on, a, on a Sunday. You go out five, six miles outside the city of London to Greenwich and you'll get a ticket. It's that inconsistency that it seems to me is a huge problem. We surely need a nationwide blanket there policy. Should, there should be a sort of federal deal, I agree with you yeah. entirely. Oh yes, yeah, certainly there should. Parking attendants, these privatised people who are allegedly on some sort of cut, uh, <laughs> some sort of commission. What are you feeling as about those guys? Providing, uh, providing, if you are overtime on a meter, then frankly, I think you deserve to be pinched. All right. And uh, you know, and I have been pinched, and I've deserved it. I suppose I don't like it. Yeah, I might have a word with your local authority to see whether you paid up or not. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> if do you do you apply the same rule to speed cameras because? That's another issue, it seems to me. I think I think that there's no doubt they have done quite a lot of good. I think, and and I I must say I don't like them. I'm not for them, uh, but one has to say that uh, they have seem to have worked. What I don't like, frankly, is when you've got a really good dual carriageway bit of road and you're probably going a little bit quickly. It's late at night and there's nobody nobody in, in danger. Then you get pinched. That I think is a is a little bit harsh. But I suppose one has to say, if the law is that, you mustn't break the law, and there, there you are. Now, let's be honest. Let's let's confess to um, Mr. We Plod. Do. We do occasionally break the law. <laughs> well, yes. we do. Yes, I think we do. I think it's fair to say. In fact, the former uh, transport uh, junior transport minister Stephen Norris said to me, "I admit that I, Stephen Norris, transport minister, breaks the law. I think you, Mike Rutherford, breaks the law. I think everybody from Sterling Moss to my grandmother breaks the law yeah. when they're driving their car from time to time. So let's be honest about it. We all break the law, but surely the problem is that the cameras can't decide which it, what's inappropriate speeding or not. I mean, my argument is that I'm not doing any harm. Not that I do this, of course, uh, but I don't do any harm. If I'm driving at over 100 miles an hour at 2 o'clock in the morning on the M25 when there's nothing else out there. Uh, but, of course, the camera doesn't recognise that. It says... You're doing well over the speed limit and therefore you're going to get a ticket. But the camera shouldn't be worrying about people doing 100 miles an hour on a motorway in the middle of the night when there's nothing else around. It should, surely the camera should be worrying about people doing 35 miles an hour outside schools yeah, and shops. Exactly. I, think, I think it's a very good point. 
but uh, I, th I think that w if it says you can do 20, it is sometimes too fast. I mean, there are times when obviously one needs to stop if there are kids crossing, and that's left to the to the hopefully the intelligent driver. Mm. But uh, r regrettably, not everybody thinks that uh, that seriously about it.